So I did promise at the beginning of this um, YouTube channel that we were going to do some funny museums and this was one of the ones that I most wanted to do, it's one of my favourite museums in the world. It's the Austrian Military History Museum. They've got a bit of a tongue twister of a name for it, I think they, it's the Heeresgeschichtliches Museum. Um, but yeah, Austrian Army Museum. Let's go and have a look inside, it's going to be great. Beautiful entrance hall. We've got uh, lots of statues of Austrian war heroes. This one is Andreas Hofer, who was a Tyrolean uh, rebel against French occupation. Um, on and on. As military museums go, it kind of wins hands down on architecture. Look at this ceiling. Scenes from the Napoleonic Wars and Revolutionary Wars. I might get my bedroom done like that. So the museum's collection starts the, the wars against Turkey. Oh, it's got some nice uh, Turkish weaponry. Scimitar. And we go through to the 30 years war, I think. So this is um, a French balloon used in 1796 in the Revolutionary Wars against the Austrians for observation. It's got to be the oldest um, military aircraft I've ever seen. Um, this of course is a replica of this bit, but the real one is right here. Yeah. That's the oldest military aircraft you'll ever see. Oh, we into the Napoleonic section now. I don't know if you can see that one Napoleonic French flag there. In the museum's not short of his um, oil paintings. Like Here yeah, they've got a section on the War of 1866. Quite important in European history, this. Quite important in the dominance of Prussia in Germany. Austrian field cannon there, 1863 model. This is an interesting model. It's dedicated to Maximilian, the Austrian Emperor of Mexico, strangely enough. And there are the helmets of his guards. It wouldn't be surprising if those are all of them that never existed in the world, but um, He had an unlucky time and um, the Mexicans shot him in the head. The 
19th, early 20th century Austria-Hungarian armies. This is uh, the uniform of the Bosnian officer. I think. Household guards. Amazing. The most famous exhibit in the museum is this. Car from Sarajevo, 1914. Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife were assassinated. Ironic that the number plate is one 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 eight. Could be eleventh of November nineteen eighteen when the war ended, but no, this is the beginning of the war. Here's the quite gruesome uniform as well. Sorry. First World War. First World War, showing the major battles on the Eastern Front. In Serbia, Belgium. I'm curious what river they think that is. Serbian Army of the First World War. Look at the size of that. Absolutely insane. This is what the Austro-Hungarian army was known for, was its heavy artillery at the time. That is heavy artillery. Austrian artillery was used on the Western Front to bombard the Belgian forts. And this is a turret from a Belgian fort that's been hit by an Austrian shell. Really thick steel. Romanian there. Austrian heavy artillery. Some of my favourite bits of the um, Austro Hungarian army overseas in the First World War. I think Gallipoli, Palestine, and China. Polish Legion in the Austro Hungarian army in the First World War. It has to be said, their First World War collection is absolutely amazing. Into war section about the First Austrian Republic. Pretty gory displays here. There's um, Dolphus, the Austrian leader, um, lying dead on a couch in the Vice Chancellery uh, in 1934 of the Austrian Civil War. And lo and behold, look, they've got the couch here and his death mask. So this was Austria in 1934, as you can see. Austria 1938. This is the Second World War section. Kettle How crazy. I remember having a little model one of these. Here's a real one. Some hats and helmets from the Blitzkrieg campaigns so of the Allied armies. There's the Polish there. That's a Danish 1923. Dutch army helmet, Belgian, Norwegian at the back. Quite a collection there, got a Slovakian steel helmet. I often saw them illustrated, never seen a real one before. So here's the Kubelwagen, once again.
remember recently on the channel I made um, a railway gun. Um, what I was using was an airfix, one of these, an 88mm flat gun. A little bit more complex than the 10.5 centimetre I was trying to make at the time, but wow, great to see it close up. And in the, the Hitler army has lost the war, and the Allied occupation taking us up to like, the, the third man film. And we're in the naval section now. Of course, Austria is now a landlocked country, but um, and it had its great empire. It was also a naval power. This would be one of my favorite bits. Look, it's a Chinese boxer tunic. Just below it. Tropical helmet from the Crete expedition. You're probably thinking, uh, who'd be the most famous Austrian uh, sailor? Tricky one, isn't it? The guy who owned this. Georg Ritter von Trapp, commandant of the U-14. Um, it's the von Trapp family. Um, he's the guy in the film. He's the, do you remember he's a war hero in the film? That's because he was a U-boat commander in the First World War. And that's his, uh, that's his uniform, isn't it? He's probably really the most famous um, Austrian sailor. The ill fated Franz Ferdinand in naval unit. It's the rusted control tower of the U 20, an Austrian submarine sunk in the First World War. Recovered in 1962. Sunk just outside of Trieste, but yeah, a genuine First World War U boat. And they've got a tank garden. A garden of tanks. But unfortunately, it's closed in the winter months. Hey, that was the Austrian Military History Museum. I say I'm all history up now. It's been great. Just a final one. The motto of the museum Krieger gehören ins Museum. Wars belong in museums. Absolutely, guys, absolutely. Wow. I have to say, that was absolutely amazing. <laughs> I've been to a lot of military museums. Uh, that's just one of, the, one of the best in the whole world, really. Any chance you get, pop over. What I filmed there was a very small fraction of it. There's, there's just tons. You can't get around it all. Well, you can, but I, I'd recommend two, two or three hours, really. And what's this outside in the snow? It's um, it's a jet fighter, isn't it? It's a Saab, I think, um, and it's in Austrian post-war colours. Beautiful outside this place. Okay, and there's more. I sneaked around the back to have a look at the tank garden, which is closed because it's winter. Um, I can't get close to them. There's quite a lot of tanks. Um, oh, I have to straighten. Over there, they've got um, the base of a panther, it looks like. Is that a dagger panther or something? Um, I think there's a T 34 Russian tank hiding over there. Oh, why won't they open it up? Because there's a bit of snow that's not going to hurt anyone, is it? Looks like I'm going to have to come back again in the summer and um, film the tank garden. Oh, what's that? It's American, is it?
Oh well, till next time.